way down to the Watermark Hotel. And this is an autograph collection hotel. You guys know I love autograph collection hotels. You know, you get the, you get some class, you get some style, you get some edge, you get some modernization. And uh, I, I, I love them. They're some of my favorite, and they're great values. Right, James. Have a great one, man. Yeah, I was in San, uh, San Jose a few years ago, and uh, it's different out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, San Jose is way different than San Diego. Yeah, yeah, I love the oceans and mountains and everything, though. Have see, a good one. See you, man. All right, so this is the watermark. I don't know if that's a rooftop up there or not, but you can see the cool lights up there. And uh, let's go check this out. So this is the lobby area of the watermark. And again, this typifies uh, autograph collection hotels. They just have so much style. Um, so here's a little sitting room right here. It's also compartmentalized a little bit, right? With the, uh, with the pseudo wall over there too. So. Let's go take a quick look at the lobby. So yeah, we just got here. We gotta work early tomorrow. So we'll explore this more when we get here, but it looks like to be a nice bar over there with some TVs going on. Um, looks like there's some restaurant tables over here. Let's check out these seats. Now I gotta give the seat test. These are pretty good. These are really, really good. So yeah, this is, uh, this is a view of the watermark. And this hotel is probably the cheapest autograph collection hotel I've stayed at. I think I got this room for around $100 a night. $109, I think, was the initial rate. And you know, cities always gouge. They put on their taxes, I mean, municipal taxes, and sometimes there's a bit of a fee, but yeah, around $100. So we'll be spending some time here tomorrow night. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But right now, I'm looking forward to getting this elevator. Interesting decor on the elevator. First floor. Apparently we're on a suite because we are Ambassador Elite. Ambassador Elite is their top hierarchy of, uh, of reward status. So they put me in a suite apparently. Uh, when, when you're on a top floor and in a suite, it's typically an indicator that the room is going to be really, really nice. Yeah, so I'm exhausted. I can't say that enough. You know, Memorial Day weekend coupled with a long day of travel and I cannot wait to hit this bed. All right. Well, nice view of some trash right there. Probably not meant to see that. Probably not too many people arriving in at midnight. So here we go. Okay, so let's get to this room. And you can see that it is very open, but yet compartmentalized. And we're going to get to this in a second. I mean, look how high these ceilings are. He has some cool art, a lot of sitting, really cool windows that overlook a neat part of the city, but we're gonna get that in a second. So this is a suite, it's on the 12th floor, it's one of the better rooms they have. It, it is only one sink, so just bear that in mind. It is a minor detail, but a detail nonetheless. Let's see what type of products we're using. That's a Guild, that's a Guild. So Guild, Guild, Guildcrest and Soames, and Guild, okay? A tall, beautiful mirror. High ceilings. Uh, I'd say these are maybe 12 foot ceilings. All right. And then the bathroom is compartmentalized. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change that is really cool but if you want some privacy in case you don't have complete and other cover of the person you're staying with you can section this off another huge huge shower because these, these share the same height of ceiling so a huge shower all glass the toilet obviously here's some art okay so we're gonna get out of the shower bathroom you come over here you're gonna dry off it's got good flow. You're going to use your products. You're going to use your nice mirror to get ready. This mirror is really awesome. Okay? This is some real brick and mortar. It's probably been here for as long as this building exists. And I think it's really cool how they infuse um, a modern touch with some of the, the traditional remnants of this building. So, let's walk in to the main entree, shall we? Which is So, this is dedication. This is dedication to the craft. This is dedication to you. All the 111 people that follow me, 
uh, to keep this room pristine. I don't want to mess up the bed. I want to do some nice pan shots. I want to go over all the room service menus. There's a book of all the Autograph Collections Hotel over there that looks so cool. Um, yeah, I got the spare bedroom set. Sleeping on the couch tonight because I'm going to leave this room as virgin as possible. I'm not touching that bed. I will give it the initial bed test. <laughs> God damn it. It's so comfortable. <laughs> Let's see how this one is real quick. Yeah, this wasn't bad either. It's not as good as that one, but it's, uh, it's, it's a second. It's the only second. It's the only option besides the floor. Anyway, this is where I'm cutting it for the day. I'm going to check in tomorrow. Uh, I think there's at least one or two restaurants here. The lobby looked beautiful. I'm going to go over more of that and, of course, go over this room. These 15-foot ceilings are so cool. You know, you got some art on the wall, a lot of windows. These windows are beautiful. I just have to go shut every one of them now. All right, day number two. Uh, the room is in some daylight right now because it is not night. Uh, last night, as you know, I left really, really late and I was so tired I could not even do a full tour of the room. We left off at the bathroom. If someone in here has the lights on or is doing something and you still want to be sleeping in here or you want some privacy in here and you want to change, you have this uh, large curtain here. All right, and it's just a curtain, but from sleeping in here last night, I can tell you that it will keep the light out and that obviously does add some privacy. So let's get into this big room. It is really, really large, nice, huge ceilings. And you walk in and you have a lot of functionality in this room. Couch was amazingly comfortable. I slept on this thing last night uh, just to keep the room fresh and I didn't have an issue with it. It was extremely comfortable. And I like the fact they give you a table right here because it gives you a place to eat and sit that isn't the bed and that isn't the desk. Typically, those are the only two places you have to eat or to sleep is the bed or the desk. And they give you this couch and a nice table. I'm gonna order some room service here in a second. So we're at the top level here. So nice views of outside. You come around, here's the bed. Beautiful bed, nice, I'd say, uh, I don't know, it kind of looks like some Aztec type of wallpaper on the background. Very, very cool. A huge leather headboard and the bed. I haven't slept on it yet, so um, let's see what this is like. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm really gonna enjoy this. The bed's great. The bed's great. Uh, the couch is great. All right, so. Just to get into some other intricacies of the room, this is some nice functional sitting area right here. It also doubles as storage. Okay, so for those of you who like to put your things away when you travel, I don't. I live out of my suitcase, but I know a lot of people like to put their things away. Um, you can put them away there. Really large table slash desk. We're going to do some room service here in a second. And what I like, and these are in every autograph collection hotel, is all of the cool autograph collection hotels in the world. Um, I'm gonna actually take this one with me. I'd love to go to every single one of these. Um, they just, they have so much style and so much edge and they're so cool. So here's one in New Orleans, by the way, Q&C Hotel Bar, all right? So all the autograph collection hotels, I like looking through those. Curry coffee, standard TV, TV. Tilts, I don't know. That seems a little iffy here. Maybe I'm not doing it right. I'm going to leave that alone. But either way, it's got a great viewing angle from the bed. So this is the room, and I really, really enjoy it, as you can tell. I'm going to order some room service, and then I'm going to go to the gym, and then I'm going to check in later. All right. There are two restaurants on site, the Gregory and Milford's. Gregory is the lunch spot, and then Milford's is the dinner spot. Both of these are available for room service, and I just order Milford's. Room service just got here. And ordered three pizzas, of course. They didn't have the fess, which is the crawfish, garlic, butter, mozzarella. But I ordered the boucherie, and I'm trying to link this menu online. I ordered the boucherie, which is butcher sausage, smoked pork belly, hog's head cheese, andouille, 
Vili Platt barbecue sauce and mozzarella provolone blend. They didn't have the fest pie, which is the crawfish, the garlic butter, the green onion, tilagio, and mozzarella, unfortunately. I did get a classic, which is just a pepperoni pizza. And then I got the swamp, which is a total sauce piquant, alligator sauce, crawfish, okra, roasted green tomato, and mozzarella blend. So let's see if we can take a look at these real quick and see which one is which. This looks like the boucherie right here. This has got to be the swamp. All right, here's the swamp. And then there's the classic. All right, time to eat. So slice of life update. You know, slice of life is about the fondness and love of the pie, not about the place. You know, a lot of people fall in love with the pizza place and not actually the pizza pie, but it's about the pizza pie. These pizza pies are pretty good. As you can see, I'm halfway through each one. <laughs> I hate to do it. This pepperoni one was probably the best. Big slices of pepperoni, great amount of cheese on it, not too much grease, um, a nice buttery crust. This one is probably the best. Call me traditionalist, call me boring, call me whatever you want. This pepperoni was probably the best. Between these two, all right, I thought that I would like this boucherie one better, uh, with the one with the bushy sausage, the smoked pork belly, hard set cheese, etc. As you can see, I always let consumption tell the tale. And I ate more of the swamp than I did of this one. And the swamp was weird. Again, internal sauce, alligator sausage, crawfish, okra. So the swamp was a flavor explosion. It's like a supreme pizza meets deluxe and then compounded by flavor, all right? There's just so much flavor going on here and it isn't too much. All the flavors coincide and it's a nice experience. Um, this one would probably be more like a meat lovers. It's just, it, it is a meat lovers. I'd say it's a bit more bland, which isn't a bad thing. Um, a lot of meat lovers pizzas get really, really salty. And this one is really well done. Um, they're all really, really good. You can't go wrong with any of these, but again, slice of life, if I have to rate them, it'd be number one, classic, number two, swap, and number three, boucherie. All right, so it's around 11 p.m. I've been at this hotel for probably less than 24 hours. So vlogging isn't my full-time job. Uh, you know, I'm not here for fun. Uh, I'm here for business, and I try to do as much as I can in my spare time. So I'm in and out of the city within 24 hours, and I haven't seen a lot of it. But the one thing I do want to do is get to every part of this hotel. So I'm going to sw swing over here, uh, get a house drink at the bar. So I feel like I did get a sampling of the restaurant, even though I wasn't there. There's the kitchen right over there as well. You can see they got the wood fire pizzas going over there. But I'm going to sneak over here uh, to the bar and uh, get a nightcap. And then I'm off to the, uh, to the airport at 5 o'clock in the morning. So let's go over there and get a drink. It's a beautiful bar, uh, very classy. You know what the coolest we're fans of? Any drink with an egg white in it. Uh, I found one drink with an egg white, and then one drink that's kind of rare with an egg yolk. Let's start with the egg white one. It's, the, it's an amaretto sour. Apparently it's the best one you'll ever have. It has de serrano, uh, bourbon, lemon juice, simple syrup, of course the egg white, and then uh, a lemon wheel garnish. And that's what it looks like. You can see the egg white. And the reason I like egg white drinks is you can kind of see it right here, so that it gives it a ton of texture. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. All right, so like two to three sips in, this probably is the best amaretto sour I've ever had. I mean, it says it right there. It is, it is so good. It's surprisingly sweet with all the ingredients in here. With all the ingredients in here, um, you know, it has some bourbon, some lemon juice. Um, and some lemon, you wouldn't think it'd be so sweet. It is really good. So if you're looking for an amazing amaretto sour, uh, come down to Hotel Lolly Bar. It is so good. We have the egg yolk drink. Uh, this is called the Golden Goose. And the Golden Goose has gin, brandy, vermouth, lemon juice, and egg yolk. As you can see, the yolk is a bit more frothier than the egg white. And I'm interested to see which one I like better. All right, I'm going in. So this is the egg yolk drink. Uh, compared to the egg white drink, I believe I like this one better. Uh, it's a tough call. This one has a better texture to it. It's frothier. Um, it's a bit more milkshakier. 
and overall I like the composite. The taste of the Amaretto Sour might be marginally better. I mean, they both taste delicious, but this one is just, um, I think it's overall better drink. I like the fact that it's um, up with no ice, and uh, as you can see, as the drink wanes, it still keeps its texture here, so it's really, really good. Uh, all right, so continuing with the local sampling, got myself here a Purple Haze. So, it's a crisp American-style wheat beer, fresh with raspberries, with a secondary fermentation, subtle coloration, fruity aroma, and a tarty sweet taste. I ordered it because it's from Louisiana. All right, so I underestimated the, uh, the pour on this Purple Haze. Total rookie move right there, half and half. Looks like a college house party pour. Anyway, it's delicious. Highly recommended. A beat of brewing out of Louisiana. It says ras raspberry lager on it. It's just hints of, of raspberry. It's not one of those um, fruity type beers. It's just a hint of raspberry and it's really good. Probably one of the coolest bottles in the industry. Look at that. Purple Haze. Delicious. Highly recommend. All right, the beer sampling continues. Just ordered the Tin Roof Uber Fruit. Great name, by the way. And apparently it has um, an eye-catching purple hue. An American Southern twist on a German style. All right, so let's see what this is like here. This Uber Fruit. Great name. Cool little can here. Let's let the beer sampling continue. It does have a really cool color to it. Look at that. So we'll let that settle. All right, so I just took a sip out of the can. Deliciousness. And apparently it's brewed right here in Bad Rouge as well. This is probably my favorite beer so far. All right, so here's somewhat of a uh, half pour of the Tin Roof Uber Fruit. And you can see that the color is really, really beautiful. It does have a purple color to it. Uh, this is my favorite beer so far. I'm on to the strawberry one next. All right, so what started as uh, just sampling an egg white and egg yolk drink turned into a beer sampling. And by the way, I'm not finishing all these beers. Uh, I don't want any alcoholic jokes or anything like that. Uh, this, a lot of these beers are native to Louisiana. So uh, I really feel inclined and uh, frankly uh, excited to try them. All right, here's a strawberry lager. It's by Abita Brewing. I know it's a bad pour. I'm pouring for, uh, for visual, not for effect, okay? So, so far, this is my number one. Let's see how this strawberry one is. Take a sip from the bottle. Yeah, it's all right. Ripe strawberries, crisp lager, Pilsner wheat malts, Vanguard hops. Frankly, it kind of tastes like it has some rhubarb in it. It's got a nice finish to it. The initial flavor is, is really interesting. It's like strawberry meets rhubarb. Uh, I still say Uber Fruit is number one. This one I probably won't go any further on. It's good. This would be a great starting beer. Um, it's not as fruity as the Uber Fruit, but it's also not as good. So it's not bad, but uh, I still like the Uber Fruit better. So quick update. The more I drink the strawberry one, the more it grows on me. It still is a little rhubarb to me. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of filling. It gets better as you drink it. I'm not sure if it's your palate acclimating to the beer, but um, it's, it's not bad. But still, it's, it's no uber fruit. Going back to the uber fruit. Yeah, for sure this one's better. So this is the uh, Abita Boot. This is the Abita Boot. This is only available in Louisiana. From what I'm told, it's not even sold outside state lines. So again, this is the Alveda Boot, and uh, it's a German-style beer that's only available within state lines of Louisiana. It's on tap here, and um, it's a very complex beer. So I took a screen recording, and I'm going to put that in the uh, upper left-hand window. But it's um, it's certainly a German beer, and you can taste it. Uh, I think that if you are a beer connoisseur or aficionado, you're probably really going to like it. Personally, I don't have the palate for it but it's still a really, really good beer. And I can always say that consumption tells the story, okay? So here's my Uber fruit, here's my strawberry. This one did not come uh, in a bottle or can because it's on draft. 
and I'm about to try this cane break in a second. But uh, because this is only available in Louisiana, and this is their flagship brand, I'm gonna get to work on it. Even though it's not my favorite, I just feel inclined to do some work on it because uh, you're not gonna get it outside of Louisiana. You get a book. All right, so this is the cane break, which I just poured right there. Fantastic pour, if I do say so myself. It only took me five one-headed pours to get it down. Um, it's brewed with Louisiana sugar cane, exclamation point. A Louisiana tradition in the works. Uh, okay, we'll see about that. Crisp and easy to drink, sparingly hopped, wheat focuses, understated sweet remnants of sugar cane. Well, yeah, I mean, it says cane break right on there. So is it understated or overstated? I think if it's called cane break, it's overstated, but let's, let's find out. All right, so my last beer of the night, it is a, uh, which one is this? Great Brown. It's a Great Raft Pilsner. I, I should know what I ordered here. But obviously, after six beers and two drinks, I have no clue what I ordered. So, here's my ranking so far. Number one was the Uber Fruit. Number two is the Purple Haze. Number three was the Abita Strawberry. Number four was the Abita Boot. And number five was the Parish Cane Break. I can't read my own writing. Cane Break. All right. It's great teamwork. Let's see where this one falls. It's awful. It's the worst one. It's like it's like prison wine no. meets, meets rancid. <laughs> You're right. Not there. You're right. What do I do about prison wine? It's okay. I'm, I'm sure that if you like Southern Joy Hop Pilsners, I'm sure this is the beer for you. Uh, it's probably craft in Louisiana. Let's see what it says about it here. Great raft. Slightly fruity aroma. That's wrong. Hot bitterness, that is true. Complex but balanced. It is complex. It is hopped up. And uh, yeah, a lot of um, complex articulations about what type of hops it has. It's, it's pretty hoppy. It's not my style, but nonetheless, um, it's probably pretty true to what it is. So, if you're at the watermark and you're looking for some amazing cocktails and beers, let me run you through the beer rankings first, okay? Again, Uber Fruit, Purple Haze, Abita Strawberry, Abita Boot, Parish Cane Break, and then this Great Raft, okay? Um, you can't go wrong with these two drinks right here. This Amaretto Sour was awesome. It was so good. It, it says it's the best Amaretto Sour you'll ever have. I don't think that's an overstatement. I think that's fairly accurate, okay? And then this Golden Goose was even better. Um, served up, super frothy, just delectable. All right, my night's ending. Have a flight to catch in four hours. So here's the restaurant over here, and then you seat right here. Um, again, you can get the full service menu upstairs in my room, which I ordered from previously. But if you wanna come down and you're interested in what it's like to sit here, this is what it's like. I have a flight to catch in four hours. I was here for literally 25 hours and I wish there was more to see. I wish I could have gone to the Capitol building and I wish I was I able to do more. Uh, the Louisiana Purchase is right over there. There's a rope that's stopping me from going in, but I'm just wondering if I can, I might sneak over there and just see what this is about. See this Louisiana Purchase is all about. I'm sneaking until someone says I can't come in here. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the love of YouTube. I guarantee someone comes in here and tells me to get out of here. But look at all these beautiful bottles of wine. Amazing. Absolutely beautiful. So if you want a private dining room, this is a really, really, really cool setup. It's 12 p.m. A little later than that. I still need to go check out the gym. So let's go check out the gym real quick. I can give you guys a tour of that. And then I'm off to bed. They should focus on having less decoration, like these weird Victorian mirrors, and more weights. 
and this punching bag in the middle of the entire gym taking up way too much space. Good cardio equipment. They got two of everything. Things come in twos like Noah's Ark, all right? They got two treadmills with LCD screens, all right? They got two um, horizontal um, bikes here, and they got two ellipticals. But in my opinion, get rid of this weird leather punching bag, a little fight monkey action. But first of all, it's way too low. I mean, it, this, is, this thing is meant towards like a kickboxer because if you're gonna, nobody punches low, right? This is meant more towards kicks. So anyway, uh, this seems to be the focal part of the gym. First of all, it is the centerpiece. All right, it's the first thing you see when you walk in. And then there's no really other options for weight training. So even at a courtyard, I see two benches and more weights. So if you focus on cardio, it's a great gym. Um, I'm gonna have a TV up in the corner, some weird mirrors and some wallpaper. In terms of autograph collection and how large the hotel is, I'd say the gym is underwhelming, okay? The gym is just underwhelming, that's the way it is. Still, one of my favorite autograph collection hotels, but you're always gonna find a negative, and we came in here and we found a negative, which is the gym, all right? I'm going back to pizza. I'm not even gonna work out here. I'm gonna work out in the morning somewhere else. But uh, yeah, if you're staying at the watermark, this is what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna hit this bag one more time. That was fun. All right, this is it. I have a flight in four hours. I'm going to bed and I'm gonna see you back in San Diego. And then next week we're going off to Arkansas. I've never been to Arkansas my entire life. We're gonna stay at the uh, Marriott in Little Rock. All right, I'm out. This is Baton Rouge. I've only been here for a little over 26 hours. I wish I had more time, but at least I was able to give you a full tour of this hotel. All right, until next time, I'm out.